Hello Bobcats. In this video we will be discussing um, the beginning or the first part of thermochemistry and today's video will specifically talk about the nature of energy. But let's define thermochemistry real quick. Uh, thermochemistry is the study of the transfer of energy energy during physical and chemical processes. Okay, so if you'll notice here that first I would like to talk about the nature of energy and in our next video will actually be about the transfer of energy and then videos after that will be on um, how we actually calculate energy <coughs> um, in chemistry. So the first one, um, like I said, is we're going to talk about the nature of energy today. I feel that it is important for you to understand uh, the basic nature of energy for us to be able to move forward on this topic. And so the definition for energy energy is the capacity to do work and or transfer heat so we'll have to define work and heat um, in the next video so energy is the capacity to do work or transfer heat. Now a couple things we need to understand is that energy is conserved. It cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed from one form to another. It cannot be created or destroyed only changed from one form to another form And this is that's the first law of thermodynamics is that energy is conserved, cannot be created or destroyed, only change from one form to another. And there are two basic categories of energy. And so energy is classified as either potential energy or kinetic energy. So we'll need to break these down and discuss each one of these a little bit more detail. Whoops, energy or kinetic energy. Okay. Now let's look at kinetic potential energy first. Okay, so potential energy um, which um, will represent uh, there's different ways to represent it but we will re represent as E uh, with a low with a subscript P that's potential energy and potential energy is energy due to position or composition Okay, um, so 
a lot of you also know this is stored energy. Um, that arises from attractions or repulsions. Um, and object experiences in relation to other objects. Okay, so what do I mean by that in relation to other objects? Or you can say, uh, when matter experiences in relation to other matter or materials or um, but I'm just going to use the word objects so let's look at the equations and that'll help us explain and then also when I do the equations I'm gonna look at the units so we can see how those all work so the first equation let's say uh, potential energy but this is potential energy due to gravity so this is gravitational potential energy it's mass so there's your object uh, this is acceleration due to gravity and height. So, in this case, the uh, attraction is and repulsion, or the attraction in this case is gravity, and uh, the object has a mass. There's gravity, and in the position of that object in relation to uh, gravity, the, the one that has the largest amount of gravity. And so, the units, if you look at this, the units of potential energy. EP comes from, okay, so the uh, unit for mass is kilograms. The unit for the acceleration due to gravity is meters per second squared. And the unit due to um, height, which is a distance, is a meter. So we're really looking at <coughs> kilograms. And then meter times meter is a meter squared over second squared. And this is all known as a joule. Okay. Now, the one in chemistry that uh, we see a lot of is uh, the electrical potential energy, in which there is a K, a constant, times Q1 times Q2 divided by the distance. Okay, so these are the charges. It could be either a positive and a negative charge which are attractive or positive positive which are repulsive or negative negative repulsive and then the distance between those charges this is called electrostatic potential energy and this is the energy involved in chemical bonds so a lot of times it's chemical potential energy because there's potential there depending on the charge values and the distance. So here's the equations. Now, so this electrostatic potential energy arises from interactions between charged particles. And it's important form of potential energy in chemistry. The next one we'll talk about is uh, kinetic energy. <laughs> it's the other form. So kinetic energy 
is the energy due to motion of an object. So we're going to say E with a small k is energy due to motion of an object and depends on mass and velocity. Okay, so what's the equation for kinetic energy? And so kinetic energy, the equation for kinetic energy is kinetic energy is equal to one half mass times velocity squared. Now let's look at those units and see how those units work and how do they match uh, the units from um, potential energy. So in this case, we know that, um, so let's look at the units. So it, kinetic energy is equal to, well, one half doesn't have a unit, but mass does, and mass is in kilograms. And then velocity is meters per second, and then you square it. So that's kilograms per meter squared per second squared, which if you remember, is the same as kilograms per meter squared per second squared for it. A potential energy and so um, we can say that this is a joule okay now some forms of kinetic energy we have thermal energy now thermal energy is the energy of molecular motion And is measured by find well, by finding temperature. So if you think about it, um, the faster molecules move, the more kinetic energy is, the higher the temperature that you will measure. So we have thermal energy, and then of course, so let's just talk about temperature real quick. So temperature, temperature is the average kinetic energy of a system. So when you're measuring temperature, you're measuring the average kinetic energy of a system. Okay, and we really will be talking mostly about thermal energy um, through the most of this unit. Okay, except for this first part where we're talking about just what is the energy in general. So, units, let's make sure we have our units of energy and understand them. Units of energy. So, a unit of energy is a joule. J-O-U-L-E with a capital J and a joule is, is a derived unit and it's derived from uh, measuring mass which is in kilograms uh, distance squared over um, not what second squared second squared okay but uh, in the United States we started out with calories uh, C-A-L and a calorie one calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. And a calorie came from the measuring the amount of the temperature change, the amount of energy, one calorie is the amount of energy change the temperature of one gram of water by one, de one degree. Okay? 
So we have joules, calories, and then there's a large calorie. I'm just going to go over this really quickly. I call this one might be the chemistry calorie, and this one would be the biology calorie, and it's represented with a small c. So whenever you see calories on uh, food or anything like that, that is a biologic calorie, and it's really 1,000 of the smaller calories up here, which is equal to 4.184, 4,000. 184 joules, or we can say one kilocalorie, or 4.184 kilojoules, okay? That's a biological calorie. So those are units of, of energy. The next thing we need to talk about for uh, nature of energy is uh, systems and surroundings. systems and surroundings because remember thermochemistry is a transfer of energy so systems and surroundings now our system let's define a system a system is a sample or a region that is under investigation. In a chemical reactance, in a chemical reaction, The reactants and products constitute the system. Okay. And then our surroundings. And guess what? Everything else is the surroundings. is everything else. Okay, so if I'm doing a reaction, my, uh, and let's say I'm doing a reaction in an uh, aqueous solution, then the chemicals, the actual chemicals themselves, would be the system, and the water would be a surrounding that absorbs or gives to energy to the system, and then if you don't have it isolated, uh, you might have, and you, beyond the water is uh, the cup that it's in, or the beaker, the glass, uh, the air, everything else is the, the surroundings. And so there's three types of systems we need to be aware of before we finish this video. So, there's the open system. Both matter and energy can move between system and surroundings. In this case, both matter and energy can move between system and surroundings. Okay, uh, an example would be an uncovered boiling pot. Or uncovered pot of boiling water. It's a better way to say it. Okay, then you have a closed system. So the closed system is energy but not matter can move between system and surroundings. Energy 
but not matter can move between system and surroundings. Okay, and then a good example of that would be um, a cylinder fitted with a piston. Just like in our cars. Our combustion engines in cars, not electrical engines, but our p combustion engines uses this idea of a uh, cylinder fitted with a piston. And so um, energy can be transferred, but not the uh, matter. In other words, uh, when I put the gasoline into this piston um, and I put air in and I react it, I have to find some way to, to remove that, the, the matter from that system. But the energy can freely flow between system and surroundings. And then the last one is an isolated system. Now, just uh, to be aware, most of the chemistry that you do in your labs is an open system. Um, the other common one is be a, a closed system, like we use in our cars, the engine of our cars. And then the last one is where neither energy nor matter can leave or enter the system. And an example of this would be like insulated thermoses. Okay. And so what's important to understand is that um, energy, thermal chemistry is the study of the transfer of energy during physical chem chemical processes and it's a transfer between system and surroundings. And then the two basic types of energy are potential energy or stored energy due to position or composition and then kinetic energy. And those two go back and forth. Um, if I'm losing potential energy, I'm gaining kinetic. And if I'm gaining kinetic, I'm losing potential energy. Okay, and that is that video. See you next video.